so we're gonna we're gonna jump into this tonight. Now you guys know uh, we just finished a, a series where we shared with you eight secrets to uh, to hearing the voice of God. Eight secrets to hearing the voice of God. Amen. And and we showed you that because uh, the 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 fact is God is always speaking to us. Uh, Job thirty three fourteen tells us that God is always speaking. He speaks again and again, but people don't recognize when God is speaking to them. They don't recognize, they don't perceive when God is speaking to them. And we said uh, the reason that is, is because many times uh, we live our lives in the flesh. Now, put your gun up. Don't be offended. I'm not at all trying to disrespect you. I said we. And when I say flesh, I don't mean uh, that you're, you know, a, a rank sinner or you're living, you know, ungodly or you're living in sin. That's not what the flesh uh, always means in the Bible. When the Bible talks about the flesh, it doesn't always mean that you're living in some sinful lifestyle uh, some, you know, offensive way toward God. That's not what the Bible means every time when he says flesh. The flesh is just the natural realm. You're living in the world. And what, what, what does that mean? Well, you have children. You have soccer practices to attend. You have, uh, you know, you have uh, deadlines to meet. You have dinner to cook. You have children to put to bed. You have uh, Zoom meetings that you have to jump on. You have all of these things that are going on in your life. And many times our attention is pulled so much into the day-to-day -day affairs of life. Amen? And, and it's not bad that we live in a natural world. And so many times because we spend so much of our time in the natural realm, it's hard for us to access or to hear or recognize the voice of God. Because God's voice, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, God's voice is in the spirit realm. Revelation 1, 10, John writing, he says, I was in the spirit and I heard his voice. Amen. And so if you're going to hear the voice of God, or if you want to hear the voice of God, you have to be in the spirit. God's voice is on a spiritual frequency. You know, I was, uh, my wife and I, we went to the, uh, to the Monday night game, the game where the Bucks came back uh, down 13 points in the fourth quarter with four minutes on the clock. And me and my wife and 35,000 other people walked out of Raymond James Stadium because we thought there's no way uh, for the Bucks to come back. There's no way that they're going to get a win tonight. We'll just, you know, wait till next week. Well, we were wrong. And if anybody tells you they were there, most likely they're probably lying because there, were, there was a mass exodus of the Monday night game out of Raymond James Stadium. We and everybody else left. But if people ask me if I was there, of course, I'll say, yeah, I was there. But if they say if I was there for the comeback, I'll have to say, of course, I wasn't. I missed that. But here's the point I want you to see. When we left that game that night, people were playing on the radio. They were playing the game. They rolled their windows down. People were blasting the game. So as we were walking to our car, we could hear the comeback. Well, we jumped in our car, and I don't really listen to the radio in my car, um, so I had to figure out how to get the radio to, to, to play. And then we had to figure out what station the Bucks were on because I was on an AM frequency. But the Bucks broadcast is on an FM frequency. And so as long as I remained on the AM frequency, I couldn't hear the rest of the Bucks game. I couldn't benefit from it. Now the broadcast was going out. The transmission was going out. They were broadcasting it, but we couldn't hear it as long as we stayed on the AM frequency, we had to get over to the FM frequency. What's my point? God's voice is on a spiritual frequency. And if you want to hear the rest of the game, so to speak, if you want to hear God, you got to get over on the spiritual frequency. Amen. 
And so we showed you eight ways to, to get into the spirit, eight things that you can do, eight secrets that you can do to access the voice of God that is on a spiritual frequency. And so we gave you eight things to do, and we closed last week. Well, we, let me give you the eight again. Here, here they are. We said you can spend time reading the Word of God. Spend time in prayer and fasting. Number three, spend time in praise and worship. Number four, spend time meditating on the Word of God. Number five, spend time writing down what you believe God is saying to you. Number six, spend time listening to messages that are full of the Word of God. Number seven, spend time receiving communion. And we closed the this, this series last week with the eighth secret, spend time praying in tongues. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Listen to me. I believe this with all of my heart. I believe what you hear tonight, if you'll receive it, it could literally transform your life forever. I believe it with all of my heart. Now, these eight secrets will help you to access the voice of God. But that's only the first step because you can hear the voice of God and yet you still don't recognize that it's God speaking to you. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, and again, I'm quoting some of these verses because I want to get to something uh, really important tonight. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, that God speaks to us in many different ways. So even though we've showed you, we've shown you how to access the voice of God, it's still possible for you, even though you're doing these things, you're, you're spending time praying in tongues, you're spending time in the Word, it's still possible for you to, to not recognize when God is speaking to you. The Bible says in Job 33, God speaks once and twice. He speaks again and again. So God is speaking, but notice what he says. Verse 14, Job 33, 14. Yet people don't recognize. So even though God is speaking, and even though you may be hearing the voice of God, it's still possible for you not to recognize when or how or that it is God speaking to you. You say, what do you mean? Can that really happen? Yeah. The Bible gives us a story of Samuel, who was a prophet. This is a man of God, a prophet. He's in the ministry, chosen by God. And I want to use Samuel, a prophet, because if, if a prophet didn't recognize God's voice, then you know, you and me, casual people, we might not recognize God's voice either. Amen? And so the Bible tells us that Samuel was a young boy, and he was serving Eli the priest, and God spoke to him three times. This is all found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. God spoke to him three times. He heard God. He heard him. And that's what I'm telling you. You can be hearing God. You may be doing the eight things that we shared with you, and you're hearing God. But you, don't, you might not recognize that it's God. And that's what happened to Samuel. He was hearing God. God was calling out Samuel, Samuel. And guess what? Samuel didn't recognize it was God's voice. He ran to Eli the priest, and he said, you're calling me. He did that three times, and finally Eli recognized God is trying to speak to you. And so he said, next time you hear the voice, simply say, speak, Lord, for I'm listening. Listen to me. God was speaking to Samuel, and Samuel, although he heard, he didn't recognize. And that's what Job 33, 14 says. It says, God speaks to us again and again, but people do not recognize it. So the second part of this entire teaching, we've already given you eight secrets to hear, but now we want to make sure you are recognizing the voice. How do you recognize that it's God who's speaking to you? That's what we want to get into now. We want to share with you some things of how to recognize when God is actually speaking to you. Now, 
As we said earlier, God speaks to us in many different ways. Hebrews 11.1, 1, God speaks in different ways, diverse manners. God can talk to you in a myriad of ways, and we'll get, in, get into some of those ways. The Bible actually reveals to you and me. It shows us the different ways that God speaks. The Bible shows us. The Bible tells us how God speaks. He speaks in different ways, and the Bible tells you some of those ways that God speaks to you and me. Now, one of the ways that God speaks to us, okay, here's one of the ways. You ready? One of the ways that God speaks to you and me is through it's my drum roll, probably not that great. But one of the ways that God speaks to you and me is through visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Many times when God is speaking to you or when God is trying to communicate to you, he will use or he will do it through a vision or a dream. They're one and the same, but he'll give you a vision or he'll give you a dream. Let me show you this in the Bible. I want you to turn with me. Notice what he says, Job 33. I want you to look at these verses with me. Job 33, and I want you to look with me at verse 14, okay? Job 33 and 14. Now, tonight, listen to me. I'm just warning you. Tonight is for the big boys, and tonight could change your life, and tonight is for men. It's for women. It's not for, you know, you got to have your big boy draws on when you come to Bible study tonight. Okay, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be steak tonight. Okay, so if you're ready for it, go ahead and write in and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to have some steak. Amen. Write in. Let me know that you're ready to go. Now watch this. Job 33. I'm going to read out of the New Living. Look at this with me. Uh, verse 13 uh, verse 14 and 15, watch this. For God speaks again and again, but people don't recognize it. So God is speaking all the time, again and again, but people don't what? They don't recognize it. Now watch this. How does God speak? Next verse, verse 15. God speaks, look at this, in dreams and visions. God speaks in dreams and visions. How does God speak? One of the ways he communicates with his people is through visions and dreams. Somebody write that in the chat. God speaks through visions and dreams. Amen? Now, when God wants to do something in your life. Listen to me. When God wants to do something in your life, he fills your heart with a dream. Yep. When God wants to do something in your life. Now, that's every one of you. You know, if you're thinking, well, does God want to do something in my life? Yes. Every one of you listening to me God wants to do something big, something good, something awesome in your life. And he reveals that plan to you and to me. He reveals it through a dream. Look with me. I want you to, I want you to see this. Go to Genesis 41 and look at verse 25. Genesis 41 and look at verse 25. Hallelujah. I'm so, if you knew where I was going, you'd be singing too. Genesis 41, and look at verse 25. Watch this. He said, this is talking about Pharaoh, and of course, you know the story, but we'll pick up right here. Watch this. He says, jo Joseph responded, both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. Look at this. God is telling Pharaoh in advance, what he is about to do. Hallelujah. Look at that. Why did God give Pharaoh a dream? Notice what Joseph said. 
because he is trying to tell you, Pharaoh, in advance what he is going to do in your life. Listen to me, child of God. Every one of you, there is something that God wants to do in your life. And what God does is he gives you a dream so that he can show you and get you ready for the plan and the thing that he wants to do in your life. Amen. Now, God gives dreams. That's great. God has a plan for me. That's great. God has a plan for you. That's great. God wants to give you a dream and reveal that plan to you. That's all well and good. But here's the, the next question. How do you access that dream? How do you access that dream? Let me say it this way. What's the method that God uses? What is, what is one of the methods that God uses to get that dream, the thing that he's going to do in your life, the thing that he wants to bring to pass in your life, his plan for you. God, God has to get you in faith for it. Everything in the kingdom of God works by faith. So you have to receive it. If you don't want it, God won't force it on you. You have to receive it. So when God wants to do something in your life, he gives you a dream. But here's the question. How does God get that dream over to you? How does God fill your heart with that dream? What is one of the methods that God uses to get the dream in your heart? Listen to me. Praying in tongues. When God wants to do something in your life, he gives you a dream. And the way that he deposits that dream in your heart, the way that that dream is conceived in your heart, One of the ways is by praying in tongues. Have you ever wondered what actually happens when I pray in tongues? Let me say it another way. Have you ever wondered how do I know if I'm actually praying in tongues? The Bible says that you can pray in tongues. This isn't my teaching tonight, but I need to put this out here for you because it will frame what we want to talk about. The Bible actually says in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 13, he says you can be praying in tongues and yet you are not making connection with God. You're actually just making a lot of noise. You're not saying anything at all. You're just running off at the mouth. Now, I'm not accusing you of doing that. I'm not saying that that's the case in your situation. But what I am saying is it's possible for believers to do that. How do you know if you are actually praying as the Spirit gives the utterance or if you're just rambling and running off at the mouth? How do you know? That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Now, when God has a dream for you, one of the ways that he gets that dream into your heart, one of the ways he births that vision in your heart is when you pray in tongues. That's one of the methods by praying in tongues. Now, let's get into this tonight. Are you guys ready? All right. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to work from, from 1 Corinthians tonight. 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Are you guys ready to go? Are you excited tonight? You got your listening ears on? Amen, I hope so. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want you to, to, to read this with me to light. I want you to read this with me tonight like you've never read the Bible before. I want you to read this like you've never heard this before. Amen. Okay, 
1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's look at this together. Verse 7. We're going to start there. He says, um, I'm in 2 Corinthians. Y'all forgive me. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, I'm excited. All right, look at this. Verse 7. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained before the world for our glory. Okay, now, let's just deal with verse 7 first. When, notice what he's saying. He says, you're speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery. It's hidden, and God has ordained it before the foundation of the world for our glory. Now, what is this wisdom that you're speaking? That's the first question. If you take, listen, I, I'm, I beg you actually tonight to take notes. I bet I'm going to take you verse by verse through this. I beg you to take notes tonight. I'm, I'm begging you. Okay, now listen. What is this wisdom that you're actually speaking? Listen to me. It's the plan of God for your life. You see, a plan is wisdom. A plan is wisdom. When you have wisdom, you have a plan. You have knowledge of the plan. You have the understanding of how to work the plan. So the wisdom of God that you're speaking in a mystery is actually the plan of God. Let me prove it to you. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 9. He says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, watch this, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. What is this wisdom you're speaking? You're speaking the things that God has prepared for them who love him. Now, you might disqualify yourself right there, and you might say, well, I don't always love God. I don't always do everything right. I didn't ask you if, I didn't ask you, if you did everything right. Those who love God are those who receive God's love for them. The Bible says we love him, 1 John 4, 19. We love him. Why? Why do we love God? Because we do everything right? Because we never sin? We never make a mistake? We never have a bad thought? We never make a bad choice? No. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. How many of you believe that God loves you? How many of you have put your faith in the love of God by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you've done that, you love God. And God has prepared things for you that your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, and for some of you, it's not even in your heart. You have no idea. You're discouraged. You're living life hopelessly. You're not motivated. We're going to change that tonight. God has a plan for you. He has prepared things for you. You and they're all good things. Everything that comes from God is good. He has a good plan. Somebody shout, God has a good plan for my life. Amen. God has a good plan for your life. Now, when you speak, let's go back to verse 7. When you speak, <clears throat> you are speaking the plan of God for your life. This plan that God has for your life, that your eye hasn't seen, that your ear hasn't heard, is spoken in a mystery. I, I need you to catch that. When you speak, look at verse 7, when you speak the plan of God for your life, which is the wisdom of God, when you speak in a mystery, listen to me, you are speaking about the plan that God has for your life. Let me say it another way. God's plan for your life is spoken in a mystery. God's plan for your life is spoken in a mystery. So the mystery contains the plan. Somebody write that in the chat for me, please. Capture it. The mystery contains the plan. The mystery, I'm going to say it one more time. 
The mystery contains the plan. Let me say it another way. The plan is contained in the mystery. God's plan for your life is contained in the mystery. But it has to be spoken. That's God's order. When God made the earth, what did he do? He spoke it. He spoke it. If God's plan for your life is going to come to pass on this side of heaven, it has to be spoken into the atmosphere. It has to be declared. It has to be spoken. That's the order of God. If, when God wanted the earth, he had to speak his plan. When he wanted man, he had to speak it. When Jesus, when he wanted Jesus to come and produce salvation, what did he have to do? He had to speak it. The word became flesh. That is the order of God. When God wants to do something in your life, he has to get you to speak it. When you speak it, the plan that your eye hasn't seen yet, in other words, is not in the physical realm. Your eye hasn't seen it. Your ear haven't, hasn't heard it. It's not in the physical realm. But God is trying to, my God, my God. Oh, my goodness. God is trying to get it into the physical realm where your eye can see it, where your ear can hear it, where you can touch it, deposit it, drive it, walk in it, birth it, marry it. God is trying to get the plan into the earth but he needs you to speak it. And when you speak it, it's you're speaking the mystery. The mystery spoken is the plan revealed. My God, when you start speaking in the mystery, the plan starts manifesting. Now, here's the question. What is the mystery? What is the mystery? We need to find that out because the mystery contains the plan. See, I asked some of y'all to write that in there. Daryl, you wrote it. Stacy, you wrote it. Olive, you wrote it. Where are the rest of you? That's you know, Obey. Do what I'm asking you to do. I'm trying to help you. Write it down. Well, some of you are driving. You probably can't. But listen to me. The plan is in the mystery. When you speak the mystery, you're speaking forth the plan. It's coming into the atmosphere but it's in the mystery. The mystery contains God's plan for your life. If you don't understand what the mystery is, and if you don't speak the mystery, and if you don't understand what that mystery is that you should be speaking, how is the plan that your eyes haven't seen, that your ears haven't heard, how is that plan gonna come to pass in the earth without you speaking the mystery? The plan is in the mystery. I say, I say the plan is in the mystery. Speak the mystery, the plan comes to pass. Don't speak the mystery, no plan coming to pass. Your eyes still won't see it. Your ears still won't hear it. But if you are bold enough to speak the mystery, then the plan, what your eyes haven't seen, what your ears haven't heard, it'll manifest. What is the mystery? That's what I'm going to show you right now. What is the mystery? Follow me now. Follow me. What is the mystery? 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. What is the mystery? Watch this. 1 Corinthians 14, same book of the Bible. We haven't changed. Same book, same train of thought, same topic. Look at chapter 14. We're, we're 12 chapters later. Watch this. What's the mystery? Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. I say, I say, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Somebody say, what are you talking about? He's talking about speaking in tongues. He talking about speaking in tongues. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, what's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing when you, what are you doing when you speak in tongues? My God, my God, my God. What, what are you doing when you're speaking in tongues? Look at this, look at this. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he's not speaking to man, he's in communication with God, <clears throat> for no man understands him. How be it, however, 
in the spirit, when he's praying in tongues, you're praying in the spirit. What are you doing? You are speaking mysteries. You are speaking mystery. Where is the plan that your eye hasn't seen, that your ears haven't heard? Where is the plan that you're not walking in right now? You over here 10 years behind schedule and the plan, God has already prepared it for you, but you're not living in it. Where's the plan? It's in the mystery. What's the mystery? When you speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are speaking the mystery. And when you speak the mystery, you are bringing forth the plan of God. My God. Go back to chapter two now. Let's work, let's work through this. Go back to chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. All right, we're in verse seven. First Corinthians chapter two, verse seven. All right, y'all are doing good. How many of you are with me so far? If you're with me, say I'm with you. I'm with you. Go ahead and let me know. Say I'm with you. I understand. I understand, Darrell. I understand. Now watch this. First Corinthians chapter two, <clears throat> verse seven. But we speak the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God will be the plan of God. God's plan for your life that your eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. He says that plan is you're speaking it. How do you, someone says, well, I speak it when I, when I just talk in, in English. No, look, he said, I speak it in a mystery. What's the mystery? Always let the Bible interpret the Bible. Always let the Bible commentate on itself. Well, that's not what, that's not what uh, Reverend so-and-so said. I don't care what Reverend so-and-so say. I'm, I'm reading to you the Bible. The mystery is what? When you speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are speaking the mystery. Where is the plan of God for your life? It's in the mystery. I could say it this way. It's in your praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, that plan for your life comes to pass. Marvin, don't worry. I'm going to help you with that. Don't worry about it. When you pray in tongues, that plan that God has comes to pass. Let's keep going. But we speak the wisdom of God or God's plan. When do we speak it? When we're speaking in a mystery. When are we speaking in mystery? When we're praying in tongues. So when you're praying in tongues, the plan of God is being spoken, declared into the earth so that it can come to pass, so that you can live in it. Okay, now watch. Watch this now. Even the hidden wisdom, right now it's hidden. God didn't deceive you. It's hidden, meaning your eye can't see it. Your ear can't hear it. You're not living in it. You're not experiencing it. Your husband's on the other side of town. He don't even know you yet. Your wife on the other side of town. She don't know you yet. Somebody living in your house. They don't, they're not supposed to be living there. Somebody got your position at the job and, and you're supposed to have it. It's hidden. Right now, you're not experiencing it. It's hidden. God didn't de deceive you. When you first start, Praying in tongues, it's not manifested yet. Watch. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Look at what God says about when you speak in the mystery. When you speak in the mystery, look at what God calls tongues. The tongues is the mystery. Look at what God says is happening when you're speaking in tongues. Look at this. Notice what God ordained tongues to do. Somebody needs to get this. Notice what God ordained tongues to do. Watch this. God ordained before the foundation of, of the world for our glory. Look at there. Every time you choose not to pray in tongues, every time you think you're smarter than God, Every time you say, I'm not going to do something like that. I ain't never going to catch me doing that. But y'all plead. Every time you do that, I want you to understand what's on the line. Your glory. Your glory. You want to walk in glory? You want to experience glory? You want to see the goodness? The glory is the goodness of God. You want to see the goodness of God manifest in your life? You want to see the glory of God manifest in your life? Speak the mystery. Notice what he says about the mystery. God ordained this mystery that we speak for our glory. And you steady not speaking in tongues. 
You want the goodness of God. You want to see the glory of God in your life, but yet you won't take the method or the route that he's ordained to produce that glory. Watch this, verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. God hid it from those who think they're smart. You know, princes speak of those who are, you know, in authority, those who are high up, those who think they don't need God. Look at what he said. He said he, he hides this from them. This secret, this truth, this mystery, he hides it from them. So he can confound the wise. God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound those who think they're wise. God chooses things that God chooses rocks to bring down Goliaths. My God, God, oh my God, y'all need to hear me. God chooses a man that can't speak to lead the greatest exodus the earth has ever seen. My God, God chooses the weak things, a man barren and says, you're going to be the father of men and nations. That's what God, God chooses things that the princes wouldn't touch. Look at this. If they, would, if they knew it, look at this, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Do you realize that it's only after Jesus was crucified? that you were able to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The Bible tells us in Acts 2, 33 through 34, that after the resurrection of Jesus, that's when we receive the Holy Spirit, and that's when we receive the ability to speak in tongues. Notice what he's saying. He's saying if they understood what this gift produces, but God has hid it from them. And it only became available after Jesus died and rose again. Next verse. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So you don't know it. You're not living in it. You're not walking in it. Okay, no problem. Watch this. Verse 10. But God reveals it to us by his spirit. You need to know the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal to you the things that God has prepared for those who love him. That's you. If you are not willing to allow the Holy Spirit to give you the ability, the utterance to speak the mystery, which is tongues, how are you ever going to see that plan manifest? Look at what he goes on to say. He says, but he has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man in him? Even so, the things of God, no man knoweth but the spirit of God. The spirit of God. You don't know the plan, but the Holy Spirit does. You don't know the way, but the Holy Spirit does. You don't know how to get there, but the Holy Spirit does. He reveals it, verse 10, he reveals it to you by his spirit. You know what's happening when he reveals the plan to you? He's imparting the dream. When the Holy Spirit reveals the plan, he's imparting the dream. Look at verse 12. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but we've received the spirit that's of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us. What does God want you to, to know? He wants you to know his plan. There are some of you who have no idea what God has planned for your life. And you're so far away from the glory that God has ordained for you to walk in. You're not living in the place that God wants you to live. You're not enjoying the things in life that God wants you to enjoy. You know why? Because you're not speaking the mystery. You're not speaking the mystery. You're not giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to manifest it on the earth. Look at what he says in verse, in verse uh, 13, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13, which things we also speak, not in words 
that man's wisdom has taught us, but with words that the Holy Spirit has taught us. Listen to me. This plan, this plan that has been freely given to you, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to be good enough to enjoy it. You have to receive it. This plan that God wants to reveal, notice verse 10, the Holy Spirit reveals it. What's the revealing? That's him putting the dream in you. When does he do this? Verse 13, when we speak with words that he gives us. Whenever you pray in tongues, you know what's happening? As you speak in the mystery, as you speak with the words, not that man's wisdom taught you, but with the words that the Holy Spirit has given you. You know what's happening when you do that? God is, is filling your heart with the dream. He's revealing to you the plan for your life. You know what that revealing is? That's him, that's him depositing the dream in your heart. What happens when you pray in tongues? Here's what's happening. God is filling your heart with a dream. God already told you that when the Holy Spirit comes, Acts 2, 17, when he comes, he's going to give you a dream and a vision. I want to close with this. I want you to set your eyes on this. Go to Acts chapter 2. I want you to see this. Hmm. If you have any questions tonight, you can write them in there. Marvin, I saw your question, and I'm so thankful, and, and, and you're here in Tampa, so I'm going to deal with you. Don't worry about it. But let me tell you something. The greatest thing you can ever do after you've been born again, the greatest thing you can do as a Christian is pray in tongues. I'm telling you, God has ordained tongues for your glory. He has ordained tongues as the method by which he reveals the plan for your life. He ordained tongues as the method by which the plan that's already prepared, that's already done in heaven, that it manifests on the earth. It has to be spoken. It has to be spoken. Light was in God. God is light. But if it was going to get into the physical realm, God had to speak it. Likewise for you, the things that God has already prepared for you, you have to speak them out. And the way you, you don't even, how, how are you going to rely on your own understanding to speak it out when he already told you, you don't know it. You haven't seen it. You haven't heard it. It's not even in your, you don't even know what to say. You don't even know what to, you over here speaking, Lord, let me marry Frank and God had planned for you to marry Arnold. And you over here speaking Frank, Frank belonged to, to, to Beverly. And you over here speaking, Lord, give me Frank. He tall, dark, handsome, six feet tall, and wave ahead. Lord, give me Frank. And, and, and Arnold's supposed to be your husband. You don't know what to speak. You, he already told you you don't know. You haven't seen it. You speak the mystery. What's the mystery? It's what the Holy Spirit gives you. You need to be speaking what the Holy Spirit is, is trying to give you the utterance for. You over here confessing, you know, Lord, I want this job, and God got something lined up for you that's going to make you a millionaire, you willing to settle for a job that pay you $150,000 a year. And God got something lined up for you. He planned for you to do something amazing. He got, he got an idea he wants to give you. He got, man, and you over here settling for something because you're leaning on your own understanding, and you're not trusting the process and the gift that he ordained for your glory. He ordained tongues for your glory. He ordained this tongues, this, this mystery which we speak to produce <coughs> glory, to produce his purpose and plan for your life. And you won't do it because you're listening to somebody who's so smart and they think they know more than God and you're not listening to what the word says. Let me keep read, let me read this. I want to show you something. I know I told you to go to Acts 2, but hold on. I'm not done first. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. Man, I wish I could see you tonight. I wish we were all gathered together physically tonight. 
my God, I wish we were together. Look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and look at, look, look at this. He says, he says, which things also we speak, I'm in verse 13, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with, spir with spiritual. Watch verse 14. But the natural man receives not these things from the Spirit. You know what he's talking about? A natural man, he won't receive tongues. He won't allow the Spirit to give him utterance. Look at this. Because it's foolish to him. So he'll never know it because it's spiritual. Watch this. But he that is spiritual judges all things. I, 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 I submit to you. You be the judge. I'm showing you in the Word that tongues is a gift from God. That it is the mystery that God himself ordained for you to speak to produce glory to manifest the plan for your life, that your eyes are not seeing, that your ears are not hearing. He ordained tongues as the method by which it is spoken into the atmosphere so that your world can change. You be the judge whether I'm telling you something from the word or not. You judge it. Let me tell you another thing. You know what this verse is also saying? You know what verse 15 is also saying? Here's how you judge if a person's spiritual. People who say, well, no, I'm not going to pray in tongues. You're not spiritual. And you will not live a supernatural life. It doesn't mean God's mad at you. It means you're not receiving. There is a life that God has for you. There is something that he has ordained that the princes don't know about. My God. The princes of this world, they don't know about it. If they knew it, they'd package it up and try to sell it. Who, who was it? Um... Um, oh man, who was it? The, the guy who saw the people speaking in tongues and he gave Peter money and he said, let me, let me get this. If they knew what it was, they would try to package it up and sell it. It'd be the, it'd be the number one selling thing on the Dow Jones. It'd be the, it'd be the most expensive item on the stock market. It, but he hid it for you. You be the judge. You judge whether what I'm showing you is from the word. Look at what he says in 15. If you're spiritual judging. Judge if what I'm telling you is from the word. And then he says in verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? In other words, how do you think you're smarter than God that you can tell God what you need and don't need to live a supernatural life? God has in his mind, God has ordained for this to produce glory in your life. And he says, who do you think you are that you can instruct God on what you should be doing or not doing? God said, you should be speaking in tongues. God said, speak in the mystery of tongues. God said to do it. God said, when you do it, you're, re you're releasing his plan and purpose for your life that your eyes haven't seen. God said to do it. And then you think you know more than God. And you have, there's so many people who say, well, you know, I don't need to do this as though you know more than God. I don't need to do this. This is not for me. You're, you're instructing God on how he should govern his people. God told you to do this. Tongues is connected to the dream. You want God's dream to come into your heart? You want to see that thing come to pass? You want to see God's plan come to pass? You need to be speaking in tongues. You need to be speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, the vision will come. The dream will come. Why do you need a dream? Because if you don't have the dream in your heart, you have no navigation system. You're going to settle for anything, take anything, because you haven't seen where you're going. It's like driving in a car with no windshield wipers. You're going to get into a wreck. And many people are making shipwreck of their life because they can't see where they're going. They're marrying the wrong people. They're getting in the wrong jobs. They're moving to the wrong places. They're listening to the wrong places. They're attending the wrong churches. You know why? Because they can't see God's plan for their life. They're making shipwreck of their life because they don't know where they're going. They can't see. And I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit wants to give you vision. And the way he gets that vision to you is when you pray in tongues. You remember Acts chapter 2? I told you to go there. Let's close it. I want you to see the connection between praying in tongues and vision. And then I'll answer your questions. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in there. and I'll, I'll answer it. Acts chapter 2. Look with me at verse 16 and 17. He says, but this is that 
which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What is this that he's referring to? They just spoke in tongues. This is the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came. And what they do? They spoke in tongues. Now watch this. And it will come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will hear dream. will see dreams. Amen. And so notice he's making a connection here. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He's making a connection between them praying in tongues, this praying in tongues and the and. The, the vision and the dreams that the Holy Spirit puts in your heart. You want God's vision and dream to come into your heart? You need to be praying in tongues. You need to be praying in tongues. Look at Acts chapter 2, 33 through 34. Look at this. He says, therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? Jesus received the Holy Spirit. And you haven't received him. Think of the pride that a person has to have to resist this gift of the Holy Spirit, this gift of tongue. You are saying that you don't need something that Jesus needs. Look, I'm going to read this again. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, he's at the right hand of God. You over here trying to figure out how to pay your rent. He's at the right hand of God, and he still needs the Holy Ghost. You over here marriage falling apart, hardly can pay your bills, car broke down, smoking, and you still won't receive the Holy Spirit. This man over here at the right hand of God and he received him. Whose situation you think is worse? And if Jesus in his good condition received the Holy Spirit, how much more will the Holy Spirit get you out of your condition? I know I'm being strong tonight. I know it. I don't. I really don't care. I'm trying to help you. And sometimes you've got to shake a person to get them to wake up because you're believing a bunch of bull. You're believing people who don't know the Bible. They don't got nothing supernatural in their life. They don't know what the words say. Everything they say, and they can't even prove it to you in the Bible. And here I am taking time out on a Wednesday night showing you what the words say. Look at what this says. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, watch this, which you now see, watch this, and hear. What were they hearing? What were they hearing? Somebody write it in for me. What were they hearing? They were hearing them speak with tongues. Remember, people from every nation heard them speak with tongues and they thought they were drunk, crazy. Notice what Peter said. He said, Jesus has received the Holy Spirit. And after he received the Holy Spirit and the ability to speak with tongues, he gave us the Holy Spirit. You see it and watch this and you hear it. Don't come telling me that we can receive the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. The Bible says if you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to see something and we're supposed to be hearing something. What are we hearing? The only thing they heard them doing was praying tongues. We spoke tongues is, is the evidence that you've received the Holy Spirit. Tongues. Now, I'm telling you, I love you. I'm not mad at you tonight. I'm not, I love you. That's why I'm being so direct. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. You need to, you need to receive the Holy Spirit. If you are born again, if you are a Christian, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you should receive the Holy Spirit. 